welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're taking a look at a vampire tribal deck splashing for Judith the Scourge Diva and also running Venerated Loxodon. And in case you think that this is my wacky brew of the week, this is a Pro Tour, a, not Pro Tour, I'm sorry, Mythic Invitational 8-2 deck piloted by Terry So at the most re recent Mythic in Cleveland against the very best competition under the maximum amount of pressure. This deck was one tiny victory away from potentially making the top eight of that tournament. Although I think actually because of tiebreakers, it would have needed to win two more games. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, anyway, it, was, it finished near the top of the standings and put up an 80% win rate in the highest level of competition constructed. And it's running vampires. Vampires. It has four Sky Marcher. What? Everybody had to read this at the Pro Tour. Four Vicious Conquistador. Four Sky Marcher Aspirant. Four Legions Landing. Four Dusk Legion Zealot. Two Maverin Freakin' Thanes. Are you kidding? Four Legion Lieutenant. And then we have four Judith and four Venerated Loxodon. For removal, we have three Conclave Tribunal and a Cast Down as well as an unbreakable formation. So this is a lot like white aggro with a bit of a vampire tribal theme and access to Judith. So this is your Benelish Marshal and Legion Lieutenant here is kind of another cheaper anthem that you can squeeze into the deck a little bit cheaper than a say History of Benalia, although Maverick Fane is kind of your History of Benalia. Anyway, it's an interesting build and what we've got over here, just a splattering of land that enters the battlefield and damages you, the, the shock lands. And then we have only four of the check lands and we have four unclaimed territory, which is usually if you need to play a turn one vampire, in my experience, you just name vampire, but you name human later so that you can get your scourge diva on. I don't believe anything else is a shaman. In fact, there's so many wacky types here that it's really all about naming either human if you have a Judith or Vampire if you have bad mana in your opening hand. All right, that's the deck. I'm very curious to see how it does in best of one. Ranked has reset for the season, so I'm back down to platinum something. So we're gonna do a, something fun here on the channel. I'll go ahead and keep. And it's gonna be called Does It Rank? So. Basically, I'm going to be playing more ranked games on channel as well as the constructed events, mostly in best of one, but occasionally we might try some best of three. And for any kind of aggro deck, we can definitely do best of one here. And this is, does it rank? Just basically means we'll play some games and see if we can rank up with it or not, or if we can improve our ranking over where we started. So we're starting at absolute zero here today, just ground level, and let's see where we go. The opponent's going to open it up on a shock. Well, that's rude. But I got plenty more nerds where that came from. I will not be intimidated by your shocking behavior. And Jeskai, maybe? Regardless, we get to resolve a Loxodon or we play a Zealot. And I think the Loxodon is the way. So I'm going to play this. We have the mana already to play Judith. So I'm going to name... Well, I guess I may as well name human. I don't think it matters too much at this stage because we have the mana to play anything we want to. But here's Loxidon. Did the opponent hold a shock? They held an opt. Okay. So important turn because the opponent doesn't want our landing to flip. That's a big deal in these matchups, but it's Dovin's Acuity, okay. That's interesting. I don't know what that means for the long term of the game here. So I guess I should have named Vampire because I'm I'm learning as I go here. This is my first time playing the deck. So if I named Vampire, I could have cast both Dusk Legion Zealots this turn after flipping the landing. So what's better, making a Vampire or playing out our hand? Our opponent can't assault our hand with this version of the deck. 
without thought erasure. So I like holding cards in my hand actually and making vampires better. Although if I could play bull zealots that turn, I believe I would. It makes the line much more appealing. Either way, it's like we get a free 1-1. One, one. This way we use our mana a little bit more efficiently and we have backup in our hand for when our opponent inevitably casts Deafening Clarion. And here is Revitalize, getting back the Dovin's Acuity. We still have to make a fun Dovin's Acuity deck. That's something I want to do on the channel. All right, going to end step, let's make a thing. I'd like to make this token. Please, opponent. I want token. Click your button. All right. Cast down probably the, one of the worst draws my deck could have produced in that moment. Let's get busy. All right, that hits. Maybe. So I, this turn, I think I like the Zealot. I might draw another playable. Of course, our opponent has mana open, but all that I'm playing around is Essence Capture. So let's make a black. Let's make a white. If we hit a land, we can make a vampire as well, which is another good reason for this play. Okay, the opponent's just been sitting on that Revitalize this whole sequence. And yeah, definitely a misplay not naming Vampire on this territory when I had the mana available for Judith already. Learn from my blunders. Our opponent with a full grip. What does it do? What does it do, my precious? If this is Cleansing Nova, it's the slowest Cleansing Nova of all the times. Okay. Dovin's Acuity. Oh, man. See, this is where holding up Settle would be very good for our opponent. But not being able to means I get to get some extra damage in. But that's part of the price of the Dovin's Acuity deck. All right, we draw that. Let's go for... Let's play the land. Let's go for the Dusk Legion Zealot first, because we might draw Judith. Or some other Anthem. Okay, we didn't. So, I'd rather hold back some creatures for what's sure to be a Wrath effect at some point. Down to three. And we'll end the turn. I'm sure the opponent has to somehow sweep this board. They have to also kill the Loxodon. They have to kill the Lox. So, a Nova or a Clarion that is copied by an expansion is probably the best way for them to handle that. Here is Dovin's Acuity. Two life, draw a card. Scoop it up. Notch a win on that belt. Making me fight a diamond. We're fighting a diamond. But our hand is pretty good, so we'll keep it. It's a nice, lean, low to the ground, aggressive hand. And I'll pay two life, and I'll play the flyer. I don't think that playing the Legion's Landing right away is the way to be. Don't want to give away to our opponent that we have it. All right, Growth Spiral. What is this? I would say it's Nexus, but Nexus is banned in best of ones. So what nonsense is this? Um, let's go with the Zealot, I think. Well, our opponent's not going to sweep the board, and there isn't much removal here. Our opponent could be on Wilderness Reclamation Niv. Hmm. If they're on that, we want to do as much damage as quickly as we can. It's pretty close. And I think I'll go for the Lieutenant and just focus on doing damage. Okay. So, let's see. This turn we want to get rid of the Reclamation. 
but what are they doing with it? Anyway, let's launch. Well, we can attack with the lieutenant and then tap. We can play this creature, this creature, and this. So I attack with the lieutenant in case I want to use the sky marcher to pump it for some weird reason. I'm not sure what that might be. Of course, there could be a frilled mystic here, right? That's the card I should be thinking about. All right. Well, I guess if the Frilled Mystic comes down and eats the Lieutenant, that sucks, but I get rid of Reclamation. So let's see if the opponent goes for it. All right. All right, let's go for the Le Conquistador. Resolve, let's go for the Legion's Landing. Quench it. Okay. So some kind of a draw-go thing going on. I could have played around Quench specifically, but it's awkward to try to figure out how to play around every available potential counter spell, and I don't think that that really exists. Okay, Thunderherd Migration. Untap your stuff. What is going on? If we play Maverin Fane. Maybe my opponent's not doing anything too impressive with all this mana. So my temptation is to ignore this. If we do that, should I just venerate and lock it on here? Our opponent showed us a quench. Let's see if they quench or counter a Dusk Legion Zealot. All right. We have another land. We could go for the Loxodon or the Tribunal. Let's name a human here, for in case we draw Judith. I think I'll go for. Yeah, they don't. They don't seem to be doing anything with this mana, at least not now. So I think I'll go for Loxodon. But first, let's attack with something. This gets over a Frilled Mystic, so I think it's the right choice. And we'll play you. Alright, so our opponent has one card. Let's see what they do with it. Sure, you've got a big dino. Very, very large. Uh, and you're getting aggressive. Wow. It's kind of something. All right. Let's go for a Maverin Fane, I believe. We could Dusk Legion Zelda, and if we draw perfectly, we could do that and Maverin Fane, but in this spot, I don't think that's the play. Now what? Is it worth throwing away a vampire to get extra damage in? It's definitely not worth throwing away the Lieutenant. We could attack like this. The opponent would block the Conquistador. They would take five. I would have a Life Linker on backup. Or I could just overpower them. See, I don't know what this blue-green deck is going to do to me. Like, what is there here? A River's Rebuke? But I feel like I have to get the game ended. Like, really ended. So yeah, I'm going to throw some of my creatures into the, vo into the void and pressure this life total. Now, we could play Tribunal now and take the shields down. We'd potentially take 10, though, which I hate. I'm going to keep holding it. There must be something else, like maybe an ooze. Although ooze will make a lot of bodies. I know some of you might be screaming about me ignoring this, but I just, from the way that my opponent's playing, their bottleneck isn't mana. So removing this doesn't matter, whereas removing this Ripjaw Raptor can very matter, like super matter. So here is Dusk Legion Zealot, draw me this card. Here is Conclave Tribunal. Take away the Ripjaw Raptor from blocking. 
Now our opponent has a Frilled Mystic on defense. We could give up the Maverin Fane and put the opponent at one. At one. God, that's so close. And we're at six, but we're going to eight with the Lifelinker. The opponent could also block here, but then they'd be dead, right? So they have to block the Maverin Fane. Let's go for it. Let's make it all about that life total. That's the wrong block. And they didn't math. They forgot to math. Diamond forgot to math. All right. Um, one drop, two drop, another one drop maybe. An elephant. Yeah, we can try it. King on the draw, what's the play though? The most powerful play is the Conquistador because it basically hits for two every turn. It's like a one mana 2-2 two -two that doesn't get into combat like a one mana 2-2. Two -two. Esper, no thought erasure? I'm confused. Isn't that how the deck works? All right, let's see what you got. Go ahead and pay two life here and go for a Zelly. Zelly make you jelly. All right, we found another land. Everything going according to plan. So, what? Moment of craving? I wouldn't target the Zealot. Okay. Interesting. What do you make of that? And Shockland. Oh, that's what we make of that. So Kaya can come down and wreck. All right. So we'll go Vampire and we'll play Mavi Fane and hope for the best. Playing out the Sky Marcher can get exiled by Kaya, so that's not very good. Yeah, they're on the hot opening, that's for sure. Let's see if I'm allowed to get into combat with my Maverin Fane. I could also go for my Venerated Loxodon this turn, but that's really bad in the face of, of Absorb. We could also try Conclave Tribunaling Kaya, which is also pretty bad in the face of, of Absorb. But I guess we can make the Absorb get played one way or another, right? So let's try this. And let's do it before combat so we know what we have to attack. Now it has this Sky Marcher. May I has this Sky Marcher. Alright, we could play the Zealot, but I like going for Tribunal here. This lets me know whether or not I have to attack Kaya or face. It also gets potentially an absorb out of the way for Venerated Loxodon to start the comeback. All right, resolves. does imply that there might be a Mortify. Also implies that there might be a Teferi. Okay, interesting. Opponent could have Mortified the Tribunal. Maybe they have another one. But that implies they don't have a Wrath if they have to kill, if they have to kill the Maverick Fane in that spot. So now I don't want to play the Loxodon into the counter, but let's try the Zealot. I don't think I have enough pressure, though. Like, this hand is garbage. And I don't think I'm going to get my opponent to tap out anyway. So, okay. If they don't have a Wrath... If they don't have a counter here, we're in great shape. If they do have the counter here, we're still in kind of the same poor position we've been in. And we got the Absorb out of their hand. And they didn't get a turn of drawing for free if they have a Chemist's Insight. 
So, I, I, yeah, you just have to go for it. Try to get lucky next time. That's probably the worst draw in the deck. Alright, damage up. I'll just hold these cards, make the opponent think that their Thought Erasure might matter. There's the Insight. Opponent's playing well. It's how you're supposed to control things. I'd say we're probably out of this game. And now I'm sure we are. The opponent was pretty much a good draw away from having it there. Our little 1-1s one can't be expected to keep up very long. All right. We don't have a 1-drop, which is pretty bad for the deck, but we have Dusk Legion into Mav into Loxodon on the play, and if our opponent actually dares cast some creatures, we have interaction, so I'll give it a try. Red Mage. Oh boy, just what we wanted. So I could kill that right away, but I think that getting the Zealot down and trying to get towards another land is really good. Steamkin has to die, though. So no blocks here. If I don't draw a land, okay, I drew a land. I don't have to take my whole turn off. In fact, I can go shock myself, play you, Play you. Get wrecked by Chain Whirler, but I don't think this deck plays around Chain Whirler ever. So I think we just have to go for it. And make the opponent have basically the perfect 1 2 3 curve. Alright. Well, that's not good. I'm going to try. Well, I'd have to draw exactly a Black Source. I guess I have to take this turn to cast down the Chain Whirler, which is pretty unfortunate. Not the way you want your aggro deck to play. And they still have four cards after completely wrecking me. Ugh. It's a nice three for one. See if the opponent wants to throw any burn spells here for the Lava Runner. Doesn't look like it. So we'll cast away the Chain Whirler. So now let's see if the opponent changes their mind. No. That's another good card. Too many good cards. It doesn't seem to matter what I play from this spot. Um, I guess I'll put out Judith because if the opponent kills it, I can take out the Firebrand. Sort of a bad two for one, but it's something. Okay, the opponent's not having that. They want Spectacle now. Right, a Gitu Lava Runner and a Fanatical Firebrand exiled with the light up the stage. They had the shock. Okay, weird. But yeah, this, this draw is cooking. This draw is everything you want in red life. I, I, that's enough for me. All right, let's. Try this hand. We've got Sky Marcher, then maybe cast down the opponent's Lava Runner, then Judith. I guess something like that. So we'll keep. I will just name Vampire right away on this because I have the mana in the Mardu colors for the Judith already. Guildgate. Okay. Well. Let's get in there. I guess I should have played the Foundry Tapped. Hmm. 
Red and green. Feels like our opponent's sitting on some kind of a burn spell, some kind of a removal. And I think we can do better than with our Judith than that. I think she deserves better. So let's get in there with the Sky Marcher. It's just one little damage. You don't have to worry. And then we will add black. And bring out the Conquistador. Be careful with your unclaimed territories, kids. And I'll guess I'll play this tapped. Although having a cast down available, it won't be good against a Gruel Spellbreaker, but to move a Chain Whirler out on curve is pretty good. So I'll play the untapped land and say go. Yep, they've always got it these days. Chain Whirler just in so many decks. Gruel, Rakdos, and of course Mono Red forever. All right, let's take two. Let's play another Vampire, and let's get the Elephant out there and get some size advantage on our opponent. I still think they have a Shock or something, either a Shock or a Lightning Strike, based on the way that turn two went. So we're going to put them on one of those and try to play this Judith at a good time where it gets a lot of damage through. Looks like that time's approaching, because there's Gruel Spellbreaker. All right, go get him, girl. The opponent can trade with the Loxodon, but it gets a lot of damage through, so that's the best thing about it. And, uh, yeah. Guess we can name human on this one. Alright, you've got a chain whirler. That is a pain. That pretty much bricks our assault. Ooh. So the opponent blocks Judith. They die here, right? But I think they have another lightning bolt or something of that nature. So what happens if they strike the Judith? They go to six. Then they go to four. Then they kill one of these. Then they go to two, because Judith wouldn't be there anymore. Now how about if I play another Judith right now? That's double trigger if the opponent doesn't kill it in response. If they did kill it in response, that would be crazy. So that's, if double trigger would be like, down to five, down to three. Then they kill this, they go down to two. I think it gets them. So if I did my math right, we'll go for you. Which one do you wish to keep? I wish to keep you. Basically functions double burn spell. Here's the lightning strike, all right. Head upstairs again. So now we attack if the opponent blocks, they go to three. If they block here, they die. Because of the trigger from the Conquistador. And that's game. Okay, for the question, does it rank? We pretty much finished where we started. The deck seems really good against the fringe decks of the format. Uh, the Gruul that you saw, the Simic, whatever is going on, like those different decks. But it has a lot to prove to me against Mono Red, and it has a lot to prove to me against Esper. Uh, both of those, which I would say are some of the strong matchups, uh, had their way with Vampires. It wasn't particularly close. So while I find this deck pretty fun, I think it faces some big challenges. And if you can at least fix one of those matchups and maybe balance out both, you might be in a better position, which honestly, I think that Mono White does. But as far as a vampire deck playing in Mythic, it's pretty cool to see. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com. 
Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.